I can't believe the serpent machine at 7-Eleven was out of order. Not only that, they didn't even have Flamin' Hot Cheetos. How'd it go? <laughs> the slippery machine was out of order, and they didn't even have your Flamin' Hot Cheetos either, Jet. However, Eggman was there and he dropped this. Aha, uh -huh, yes. Hmm? Is this? What is it? It's an entry in Eggman's diary. It's about the Babylon treasure from our ancient ancestors. Hmm. It says something about the world's largest blockbuster. <laughs> I got those bird brains to believe that Babylon treasure was just a gem. I can't I can believe, believe that they, they fell for it. it. What, what fools? Can you believe the real treasure is the ancient but advanced technology of the Babylonians? What irony. I found a story about a boy who received an angel wing from the Babylonians as a gift. Kid Icarus? That with it, the boy was able to rule the world. And this was just a gift. I'm anxious to find this technology as soon as possible. Imagine the vast possibilities of the technology they must have kept for themselves. <laughs> oh, man. I guess it's not a gem after all. Hmm. Oh, well. Guess this was just a wasted effort. Too bad, really. I haven't the slightest interest in world domination or advanced technology. Hey, wait a second, okay, Jet? While Eggman may not look smart, he is. He has an IQ of 300, after all. If he's interested in this technology, it must have value. Are you saying Maybe the world's largest buckbuster still has movies and games locked inside. It may be more valuable than finding silver or gold. Huh? You can even be richer than Scrooge McDuck. <laughs> <laughs> Why'd you do that? I was just having this great daydream. Come on, Jet. It's time to go back to the... When your table at Red Robin is ready. All right. Let's finish this. Then we'll finally get the treasure of Babylon. Babylon Rogues, party of three. Babylon Rogues, party of three. Your table's now ready. All right. Win the World Grand Prix. So here's our 11th stage. Dark Desert. Hello everybody, SuperMe84 here, and welcome back to Sonic Riders on a Nintendo GameCube. In the last episode, we did Ice Factory and White Cave with Storm and Jet. Now this is where it gets really challenging, because if you want to win this race, then you have to be really competitive at it, and learn everything that you know, because the AI here is really tough. I mean, really tough. They can catch up to you in a snap. I find this stage really frustrating than Sand Ruins because when the first time I played this stage in Star Mode, it took so many attempts to win this race because of how competitive the AI is. But the next stage after this was even worse. When you're using a speed character in this stage, you always want to grind on this rail here because it's much faster and easier instead of jumping off from platform to platform. I'll rotate the control stick to get on this thing and it will launch us to the other side of the track. A uh, grind on these rails here can be useful. If you're in the lead. Lap 2. 50-60. Um, jumping off on these ledges here and doing tricks isn't really necessary unless you want to refill your air. There is a way to get on that upper part of the track. You would have to get behind an opponent that has his or her air turbulence activated and perform a trick. And there is a 100 ring container there if you go on it. But remember, in this stage, you really want to get away from the AI as fast as possible. This means you would have to take advantage of your air. Alright, final lap. 49.50. I mean, one thing I'll say about this stage is that it doesn't have a lot of turns or difficult turns to go through, but it's really bumpy and it has too many ramps to go through. And like I said, the AI is really tough. All 
We're almost there. There we go. We did it in 2 minutes and 30 seconds. Fastest lap, 49.50. Alright, on to the next one. like we have company we gonna rumble targeting targeting a tab knuckles now's not the time to fight smart thinking let's get out of here forget the red mutt let's go storm Oh, Knuckles, you just got roasted. Wait for me. Knuckles just got roasted. All right, run from Eggman, Robo, and finish in first place. So here's our 12th stage. Sky Road. This is another stage where you don't have to deal with Oma Chow rambling. So now we're in Sky Road. Now I find this stage more challenging than Babylon Garden because you're not only racing against Eggman Robos, but you're also racing against your teammate Storm and the other two opponents, Knuckles and Tails. Alright, you gotta jump. Okay. Look at we got on this turbulence first. Now this turbulence is important for a number of reasons. One, it activates when the first player goes through that jump. Two, it acts like a ramp so you can do tricks to refill your air like in Babylon Garden. Three, it acts like a shortcut so you can stay ahead of the pack. But there are times where it can be difficult to get on it. And if you don't make it, then you're going to have to take the normal route and go through that spiral turn. Alright, lap 2. 45-40. So luckily we're a fly character and we can just cut through that long turn and go through these rings. So remember when I mentioned about the aircrafts firing missiles from above back in episode 3? Well yeah, in this stage, if the first player comes through, they start firing missiles and breaking parts of the bridges on the track. I think they shoot 4 times, so you need to be careful not to fall and don't want to get caught off guard from it. If you're using a fly character in this stage, you always want to take the ring pass because it's much quicker than taking the normal pass. And you also want to get on the second level of the platform when you're going into the pillar cannon. Alright, final lap. 41, 41. So like I said, I find Skyro to be more challenging than Babylon Garden because when the first time I did this stage, it was so frustrating. Like, it took so many attempts to win this race, more than it took in Dark Desert because the AI can go through that air turbulence and catch, catch up to you. There was something I was going to mention in Episode 1 when I was doing Splash Canyon. So there's this thing called Drift Buffering where if the player is using a fly character and goes through the ring path, and if they pause the game multiple times, and if they hear a boost pad, they are able to clip through this entire stage. It's not easy trying to pull off. I tried it myself a couple times, and it wasn't working. But if you see people doing speed runs or time attacks on this game, then you'll probably know what I'm talking about. And there we go. And we did it in 2 minutes and 8 seconds. Fastest lap, 41.19. Alright, that's going to do it for this episode. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed it, make sure you leave a like or a comment. Don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time. Forget the red mutt. Let's go, Storm. Did she say red mutt?